I feel like anti-vaxxers have branched out during the coronavirus into new conspiracies. Um, like there's a, the Venn diagram overlap of anti-vaxxers and 5G spreads coronavirus is like almost completely solid. It's a which circle, is, yeah. which is Which is funny because anti-vaxxers believe that the measles vaccine causes autism, but then also believe 5G waves are causing uh, uh, corona, which is a very autistic thought. <laughs> yeah, yeah. To think that your phone's giving you a disease. To be like electromagnetic radiation causing virus. It's coming, it's through me, it's coming. Like it's, it's almost like it, it implies that they've got like a science knowledge that right. could come through being autistic themselves. Or that they were vaccinated and therefore autistic and then now believe autistic conspiracies like telephone wires are like giving them diseases and talking to them and, oh, I got the flu off the, I got the flu off my vacuum. That's in the yeah. same territory. I got herpes from the, the dishwasher. No, it's the energy, the, the steam, the, you know. The toaster gives me AIDS. Fuck. Fuck. 43. <laughs> Yeah, um, my, my bevel, my bevel mixer. I got genital warts. In the... mm. Mm. Breville, Breville killed my, ne my mate Neville. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> Devil it's funny Breville. to it's funny to joke about about autistic conspiracy and then act, then then act autistic in the bit like it's high yeah. level. It's high level meta comedy. The devil with the Breville killed my mate Neville. Fucking virus, virus devil. Yeah, um, that's uh, that, that's. <laughs> oh boy, I love it. it. it it's crazy, yeah. To to think that, like, I've never thought a, a, a virus would come from. I'd like to find someone who was into the five G conspiracy that wasn't an anti vaxxer Right, they've just come fresh. Yeah, it's like a fresh one. It's like, no, no, you need to vaccinate your kids. But fuck, my phone gave my wife a lung disease. <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's funny to come in because you, anti-vaxxer conspiracies are a gateway conspiracy. It's a gateway drug. Yeah, it's like going, I'm going to try drugs. I'm going to shoot up heroin. That's what try the 5G what? coronavirus is right out there. You don't. You don't yeah. start there, do you? You smoke weed, you try acid, you maybe snort speed. This is the same with conspiracy theories. You don't go, oh, 5G radio waves causes coronavirus. You go, oh, the, uh, the lizard people seem to run the banks. Um, the banks it's, seem to be the problem. I you feel know. like it all comes out of anti-Semitism as the base one like it's like jews lizards and then you work your way out to anti-vax like you kind of but you go through anti-semitism first and explore that yeah anti-semitism is, is the gateway conspiracy it's the first one you start all the banks are run by the jews welcome come right in okay now let's talk lizards let's talk appliances and radio waves causing viruses let's talk um let's talk people on the moon nazi bases in antarctica pyramids on planets then you're right out there to you know whatever all, you, you're in yeah the the, the, the interesting thing about anti-semitism is that it's the only prejudice where the victim of the prejudice the jew is perceived as higher more intelligent and super like knowledgeable that's their that's their problem okay you know what i mean like yeah. Racists believe black people, Asians, whatever, are inferior, dirty, dumb, stupid, right? Yeah. That's the, that's the standard racism. You believe the other, but Judaism, anti Semitism is the only one where you go, oh, yeah, they're evil and bad, but they're really smart. They're controlling society. They control the media. They're pulling the strings. They're secretly siphoning money. They control the armies. You know what I mean? They're super intelligent. It's more envy that they're having a, a really good time well, in a castle. Well, yeah, I feel like you know that's what I mean? No, I think it's, it's, yeah, but I think it's like definitely that they're, they're somehow super intelligent and evil. That's why they're yeah. geniuses pulling the strings of society, right? That's the oldest 
elders of Zion conspiracy, which is, which is really racist and dangerous. And it makes it one of the most dangerous prejudices on the planet. And the way to fix it is to understand that Jews are actually incredibly stupid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that's what that's, if you want to stop anti-Semitism, we need to have more like the Irish jokes. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Jews are actually stupid. Orthodox Jews have a high level of coronavirus because they refuse to adhere to social distancing because, you know, they don't believe in it. And, you know, like Jews are just as stupid as everyone else. Yeah, that's that's the way to cure anti-Semitism. Right, because the danger of anti-Semitism is that you believe that they're super intelligent beings controlling the planet when they're just stupid like every other race. You need to have more like movies where the Jew guy can't read and stuff. Yeah. Like, what? I can't because I'm Jewish. I can't even read anymore. Yeah, because you don't hear any. There's no Irish conspiracy theories. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> like Mickey. But that's our heritage. Up. Our racism yeah. that we cop. You know, well, you call it racism or whatever you want to call it. You know, the English and all that with the with the Irish was um yeah. just that we're it's fucking just- stupid. Big Mick hat, you Mick McFuck, McDumb, yeah, um, Mc, fucking Mick McLara, McLara. Like doesn't know what shapes are and just like IQ of eighty, and that saves you from genocide too. Doesn't That's it? what I'm saying. Imagine, yeah. imagine now if you were like, oh, the Irish are controlling the banks. <laughs> yeah, I mean they're not, not really. controlling. That. They like that. That's the other thing as well. Like the the Irish one, it's like the potato famine was the closest they had to genocide. It was like where are the potatoes? You know, like they're running out of potatoes. You know, it's pathetic. <laughs> yeah, it's like, not funny. Like, it isn't funny, but it, it is. No. It, it is the in the terms of museum. what's that? I went to the potato famine museum. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which I guess. Is sort of like going to like Auschwitz mm. or whatever, but different. It's just a field. Yeah, it's just a. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a barren field that can't actually yield crops because it's so barren. Mm. Um, no, it was just like an office building. It was just like an office that had been repurposed and had like Microsoft Paint type printouts of like a guy that was looking for potatoes and stuff. Like it wasn't well produced. <laughs> Right. Like it was kind of an insult. You felt like you it know. deserved more for, for a near near eradication of a race. Yeah, they should use really good printout. Like, you know, they should have some really nice architecture. And well, it wasn't it well done because the Irish did it. Yeah, totally. They should have got a Jew- Jewish guy in. A Jew oh, would have done it all properly and then would have been still behind the scenes, siphoning money from the museum and so on. It would have been thorough. Mm. as well this had spelling mistakes in it it was like mclarity yeah. like yeah scurvy yeah the the irish have dodged a bullet there by by being their prejudices that they're dumb stupid and drunk and the jews yeah. are that they're super intelligent and evil and are capable of controlling the very strings of society in a way that we don't even know they're doing it which would you rather be i'd rather be the irish that's all i'm saying yeah i'd rather be jewish for the for economic reasons, but um, <laughs> yeah, I, I actually believe this conspiracy theories, and I actually yeah. do want to be Jewish because yeah, I want the money. That's the thing. But you can go to like I love I love Jews, you know, because they're just they they they're awesome. But like you can go two ways on that too. Like you can you can hate them as well. Like it depends. Mm. Like I'm I'm more like that's awesome. Well, yeah, you can go two paths with any race. <laughs> yeah. You can, yeah, you can always kind of choose. You can always yeah. choose to hate a race. Yeah. But we choose not to. Yeah. And every but day. It's there. The, the fork in the road is always there. Yeah. There's there's always the thing as well that they have It's like my seat. bit about the Asian driving bit where I go like there's a part of us that goes, oh, they all can't drive. But then there's the more intelligent thought where you go, no, no, some of them are good at drifting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, like you overpower the the base low hanging fruit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but I think, like, yeah, I think 
you know, like Bill Gates, is he, he's not Jewish, eh? He's... No, no. The whole Jewish conspiracy controller thing is just such a racist viewpoint because it's like, what about the military industrial complex? What about oil? That's predominantly in Arab countries. Like, do you believe the Arabs are controlling the world through manipulating? It's just a very uniquely thing. But um, the Bill Gates conspiracy thing is what kind of people do you think, what kind of people are the people, to get back to the point, what kind of people are the people that are anti vaxxers and 5G? Like, who, what, are the, what is this demographic? It's a flavor. It's a type of flavor. It's, a, it's an interesting flavor. I reckon it's got a couple of flavors in there. Um, you got your Byron Bay hippie vibe. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's in there. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm yeah. a wellness guy, I've got healing crystals. I'm doing like, I'm doing all the health stuff. I'm juicing. I'm in a state of cellular autophagy. Um, I skip breakfast and all this. So they, they're very healthy. I think some of them. Like, which goes against most conspiracy theory theorists that I know, which are unhappy, depressed, extremely overweight. And, uh, and um, yeah, they, they, they mostly eat like chips. Doritos. And Doritos stuff. and yeah, Doritos. Doritos could sponsor conspiracy theorists. Yeah, that's the other type of conspiracy theorists, sort of the the bong smoking, like like just eating pizza and like talking about lizards. Like yeah, focusing on it's a great way out to be like, my life sucks because of the lizard people. So that's why this that's why I lay awake at night watching um, my laptop by downloading full length pornography, you know, like full length pornography from Pirate Bay, like the whole story. Like, Quarantine the whole thing. Yeah, the whole thing, like the whole hour story and watching it on my side. In and the then darkness. you feel bad and go, it's because of the lizard people that I yeah. feel empty mm. inside. Mm. Um, that's one type. And then the other type is sort of like the jogging type, like health nut, sort of NRL type flavor of. You know, like the, the, yeah. the, you know, how like a lot of NRL players, uh, anti vaxxer, yeah, yeah, because yeah, they're, yeah. But they're it gets a nuts. very interesting section, the anti vaxxer, yeah, because you've also got the you know, the yoga teacher in Byron Bay that's like, I'm just all natural, mm. but and, and then, but I think the anti vax is a combination of that, and then it's a combination of that and crypto fascism. Right. Like a, yeah. It's, so I said that there's a weird like, it's like if an anti Semite was into, to Pilates. It'd be an eclectic meeting. You'd have jocks and like hardcore fitness people, and then you'd have hippie yoga instructors, and then you'd have a weird eclectic group of middle aged mothers that, sort of, you know, that parenting click kind of thing of anti vaxxers. Yeah, kind of like concerned mothers against drink driving type vibe mm. yeah that that uh bolsonaro guy he's a hack as well like he just copies like anything trump does really i didn't know that like at least hitler was original you know mm. like this guy he like copies all trump's material like he like he'll he also advocates that hydrochloroquine that anti-malarial yeah, it's wild that Trump came out and said he was on that. That's crazy. I guess it's skin in the game. Oh, is, is there links to him having... Well, like, I just think, like, if you're promoting it, you should use it, is the thinking, right? <laughs> right. It's so nuts. I guess that's, like, a real TV salesman huckster thing. Like, I use it. I use the bleach to get out my thing and it, like it's a shit product. You know what I mean? I use the fitness ad pro myself and it's like him. <laughs> Comparing Trump to a, to a uh, midday show um, salesperson on a morning show is fucking hilarious. Yeah. You know, the ab thing where you just, you just sit there and it gives you abs. Yeah. And it's there's like, always that bit where they're like, it folds under the bed really easily. Yeah. <laughs> there's always that part and don't worry it folds away like that's the problem like not not your inherent yeah. like a, not our inherent yeah. like a motivation we've actually made an elixir a thing that literally gives you abs from the comfort of a chair while you watch tv and stuff your face with pizza but oh the, 
one of the problems is how to store it. So, but we've actually, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like if that actually worked too, would give a fuck if you could store it or not. Yeah, I'll just leave it on the floor, thanks, because I'm so fit yeah, now and ripped. Be, yeah. <laughs> all the women, all the women coming to visit me can just step around it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I don't mind tripping over it once in a while, considering it got me ripped from the comfort of my chair. Yeah. <laughs> but like, you can store it away. Yeah. So. Uh, yeah, I'm getting stronger, but where the fuck can I store this ab machine, the ab 3000? Um, are you reading <laughs> Trump's Art of the Deal, you were saying? Yeah. I just thought, you know, I'm in quarantine. Uh, I might as well do some reading. But, yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, an interesting book. He, um, he, yeah, he, he's, he's got a very good work ethic in the book. Um, you said there's, like there's elements of inspiration in it. Well, yeah, just that he can, like, because I'm so lazy, I guess. It's like, oh, he gets up at six and, you know, makes deals all day. Like, I've never made a deal. Yeah. You know, maybe I should... Yeah, it's Before? like, how do you get into deal making? I, cause I've, I don't think I've ever come out on top of a deal and like he makes like hundreds of phone calls every day. Like just so many phone, like he's just every phone calls like a deal is like just made another deal. Mm. Whereas like I've never even been able to hang, hang up a phone call. Like I have to wait for the other person to hang up because I'm like, fuck, I don't know. Yeah. I, I care going. too much. I care too much about what people think. So I, I'll never be good at deals. You know, you can't, yeah. you can't be like doing a deal where you're like, yeah, you know what, what you want is fine. I'm sorry, man. I didn't mean to, are you okay? Like, are you angry? Cause if you're angry, I'm really sorry. I just thought, no, you take it. Yeah. You take it. I, yeah. Like I couldn't even negotiate a rent reduction. Like, even though you don't have to pay rent, I was like, can, can you, can I not pay rent? And they're like, no. Nah. And I'm like, no worries. <laughs> Remember when you lived in a, in a rental where the owner would just, <laughs> The owner would just turn up and wander around the house and like open doors and go into rooms and grab stuff. Uh, yeah, I, I, lived, I lived in a place where the, the, the owner would come in and he would go, wakey, wakey, hands up, snakey, and come into rooms. And like he would open your door and come into your room while you're in there. <laughs> like they, I think they just knew that no one in the house was assertive enough to say this is not cool. Yeah. Like we were so young and dumb. We didn't know we had any rights. Does that make sense? Like it's absolutely. It's unbelievable breach of uh, you know, landlord tenant relationship <laughs> to just be <laughs> wakey wakey hands off snakey, just to be wandering around the house grabbing stuff and you would have to stay in your room because you were too scared to run into him. Yeah, I would um I would I learned how to stop breathing. So that I <laughs> So you could hide with your home. I hid under my bed once because he came into the room. It was, it was like, I felt like Anne Frank. But like if Anne, Ra Anne Frank was just in rental arrears, it wasn't like she was a Jew. She just like didn't pay rent for the attic. And like there was some German guys trying to like find out what was going on with the property. Wakey, like, wakey, they hands off a snakey. They weren't going to kill her or nothing. Just have a, a robust conversation about moving forward. Yeah, a nightmare. And also moving the fuck out. Yeah, you told me to get stoned and watch Contagion during the lockdown and uh, arguably the worst piece of advice anyone's ever given me of anything. Smoke weed, well, which makes you paranoid, then watch a video about what could happen if a pandemic. <laughs> it's any testament to my mental health, I found it relaxing. But that's <laughs> like... I found uncut gems relaxing as well. Like I find like ang ang movies that convey anxiety through like a pulsating douche, douche, douche of anxiety, like fear, they relax me. Right. Right. So I found that, I found that extre an incredible experience. It was That's fascinating to me to get stoned and watch a movie about a global pandemic going wrong and destroying society while you're in a global pandemic and society is not functioning and you're stuck at home. When I when I was watching it, I had to pause and rewind because the sirens from outside were interrupting the sound. 
Like I had to go, fuck, I can't hear it because of the sirens because of the ongoing pandemic is interrupting yeah. the movie about what's happening. It was a, it was a surreal experience. Mm. Um, yeah. But the really ambulances and the police trying to stop people from, and you're like, I'm trying to watch that on the thing now. And, and yeah. Oh, that time when it was like, it was like Gotham. Remember? It was when there was so many sirens. Mm. Who do we need? Batman. We need Batman. But that was a fun game to be like, is that ambulance? Is that ambulance for Corona or something else? I mean, surely not. It interests me a lot how the, the difference between the, the tabloids and the broadsheets uh, is the back section on the food. You know, like they, they always have, you know how every newspaper has a recipes lifestyle section? Yeah, there's huge differences and they know their demographics uh, palettes are different. They have different palettes. <laughs> different palettes. <laughs> the Daily Telegraph reader and the Financial Review reader have different palettes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I like think they so. They enjoy different, different foods. Mm. Like the, um, the fi Financial Review guy in his Sky Cube as he slowly moves over some spreadsheets from his futures dealings is, is not going to then yeah. snack down on a trucker's hot box of uh, deep fried sausages and, uh, you know, Dagwood dogs. Yeah. fucking you know like the that weird square ham or whatever show us what you yeah, got that, from the daily telegraph their, it's, their it's, food it's, it's all let's see how it's all yellow yeah like it's all just yellow yeah shit yeah just like you're gonna kill over and die sort of stuff it's like a fish and chip pie full of shit it's just like get the shit stuff You'd never get that in the Financial Review or the Australian. Well, the Financial Review will have like, you know, get a grass fed, you know, like chicken breast, like make sure it's organic with, with an asparagus. Um, yeah, lemon, fennel, pork, milk. soy sauce reduction, kale, fried. It's like these these guys like, are like... Yeah, more colours. Mm, that's such a good point. Yeah. Yeah, look at that. If you put well, that in the Daily Telegraph, they'd be like, that's for fucking puffs. <laughs> that's a black basil chicken. That's a vanilla ice cream with roasted black sesame sauce. Fuck. Yeah, that's... And then in the um, Daily Telegraph, it's like, eat up pies and fucking deep fried yellow shit. Yeah, it's got a work from home lunch that aren't beans on toast. You've got a, a pie maker mini lasagna. Filled with shit. <laughs> like it's going. <laughs> it's so funny that you like that that you know that say the Murdoch papers can they're from the same like the Australian and the Courier Mail are the same. <laughs> it's the same organisation. So there's someone at the top going, yeah, just pies and fucking you know chips and shit. You know the shit that they eat, and then the shit that you know, we eat in the other paper. Yeah, they, yeah, th that's not for them. They won't, they're not going to like that. It's funny to just have an overview of society that you can manipulate. Just Yeah, because as you say, it's the same people. Yeah. It's the same office building where they make these decisions for what they eat. Yeah. Do you think they just call up some guy and go, what do, what do poor people eat? You think they're doing a bit of uh, on, the, on the research, dropping by the local server or whatever down near the fucking hot box and... Trevor rocks in after his morning plumbing and gets one of those iced coffees and takes a shit. And on the way out, there's a Murdoch paper guy going, Hey mate, what do you, what do you prefer? Oyster Kilpatrick or deep fried fucking meat? And he's like, oh, I prefer the meat. And he's like, great. Thanks. Thanks. Just makes a note in his clipboard. Yeah. He comes back. He's like, they haven't updated their palate. They're still scum. <laughs> yeah. There's like that one, that, that, that one about, like when you go to the 7-Eleven, they have the, the tradie snack box and it's like, it's all shit that would almost kill you if you ate it. Mm. 